Hi everybody, it's Emily from DIYM. By the way, do you think I need to clean my place a little bit? <laughs> So today we're gonna do a video. So yeah, so I made some really cool Halloween spider rings and I know you can easily buy spider rings, no problem, at stores a lot of the time, especially around Halloween. I haven't really been going outside much because of COVID to look around the stores and I didn't see any spider rings from what I saw on Amazon. I'm sure there's tons. At the time I was searching because I was trying to get things going a long time ago, I couldn't find any at the time. So, but I did make these guys so the webs behind me as you can see have a few spiders that you can put in them if you wanted to they had a lot left over so I was like well let's do something with those so I did a whole bunch of cool little rings with those but then also if you guys watch my apothecary jar and bottles video that I did for making a lot of these ones behind me and a whole bunch of other decor for my place you will have seen these kind of spiders in the video so I made those into rings but then I also kind of embellished some of them and put like looks like a little dew drop on their head yeah so I'm basically going to show you how to make those really fast pretty much right about now so if you have spider rings hopefully this is easy enough to do and to decorate but I find things are a little easier to decorate when it's kind of like on a flat surface so if you had spider rings you probably have to get some sort of foam or something sticky maybe like a poster tack or even like a kneaded eraser or something to stick the whole ring in so you can actually easily put it on something flat to decorate it. Anyways, we've got these spiders. We have, I don't know if I'm gonna use all these, but I'm gonna bring them out anyways just to show you guys. So we've got like a whole bunch of different gem things here. There's like silver, gold, then there's different colors and stuff. And I've used this in one of my other videos. So I used this in my Trivial Pursuit game video when I was making my little pie. So I used a few of the gems and stuff here. And then I've got all sorts of other gems and stuff here. This was also my Tree of Pursuit pie video. I just organize things a little bit differently now. So I've got these containers from scrapbook.com. But yeah, I really like them. Some of them are shorter than others, depending. I like them a lot. They work really well. So these are some beads. I may not use the beads, but I might use these guys. They're kind of more flat back, clear cabochons. So I might use that for sure. So I also got some stuff from Happy Koi Supplies yet again. The person who runs the site has white and black I think they probably have more colors too, but I just got white and black rings. They're just little plastic rings, the ones that sort of, if they don't fit your finger, they can expand a little bit. They're meant for kids, I'd say. So you can do white or black if you wanted to. Say you wanted to make white spiders or paler spiders, I guess, for like pastelloween or something. There's that as an option. It's really cool. So the Happy Kawaii gives a bunch of sort of like bead things and whatnot. So they've got like cute little cats and Ouija board things and stuff in here. So I might actually use those on top of my stuff. I'm also going to try to use, again, I used this Dimensional Magic in another video, and I think that was also the Trivial Pursuit game one, so I used that there. You're not supposed to shake it. I think I shook it last night, so we'll see how many bubbles come out of this, but I'm just mainly going to use it to glue stuff down. I mean, you can go over things too to varnish. And then this I got, so this is something I should have used in my Trivial Pursuit video. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but if you ever do diamond art, you can basically use these. So there's little trays here, so you can put little gems and stuff in there. And then you basically, this is almost like a gummy sort of thing, and you sort of stick whatever you need. So there's different tools in this package. Some with like, you can stick like a few jammies on here, or like one, or like a bunch. So yeah, it really depends on how many you want to put on at a time. But I got this whole kit. I'll try to link it down below if I can find it again, but I'm pretty sure I got this from Amazon. So there's actually two different types of spiders, as you can see. So this one kind of has like almost like a flat top to it. This one I kind of like on its own. I think I'll just leave it. And you can make these spiders as pretty or as creepy as you want. It's whatever your aesthetics are, right? And whatever you think the aesthetics of the person you're gifting to is. I'm going to... My husband just used this for some sort of project recently. So I'm just going to use the lid of this margarine container. It doesn't really matter what kind of thing you use here. But I'm just going to get some bubbles out. And so what I'm going to do here, because it's flat still. It helps. Let's see, there's some bubbles here. Let's put that out of here. I'm just going to basically close that. So it looks really milky when you first do something like this. I'm just going to stick it on there. If everything all goes well, it should sort of remain clear. But I kind of wanted to make it look like there was like a little dew drop that it was carrying on its back. I thought that would be really, really cute. So anyways, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that aside. I think this is going to be a little more delicate work. So I'm going to take this guy. You can break these up if you want to. See, they're actually kind of gritted off a little bit. I'm just going to take a little bit. So you just take a little bit of that and you pick up things like that with it. 
First of all, I'm going to do Ouija side up so you can actually see what it says. And then I'm going to put another little drop on the head of this guy. And I kind of want to put the Ouija planchette on like that. That was pretty easy and straightforward. So I'm just going to let that dry as well. Might shift this slightly. Let that guy dry. I'm going to do the same with this one. Put that aside. Now, if you want to, you can do things like if you have like a little flat back cabochon flowers or something, you can put that on there. Actually, that one's kind of fun. Put like a fun little flower on there make it kind of a prettier ring. This one, I don't know if that's going to work very nicely, but it basically looks like a fun flower ring and then you've got this crazy spider thing coming out of there. I'm not going to use any of these guys though. I think I'm going to use some gems. So that's an idea in case you guys want to play around with something like that as well. I like some purple. Yeah, let's just pour it a bunch. So I'm going to put that on kind of like the thorax area because it's a little longer. And then I'm going to do the round looking one. And that looks pretty cool. I'm going to just put that one aside. So you can do whatever you want and just be dazzled on. So I'm going to put these guys back in here. And let's see if I can get some other pretty ones. But yeah, you can do any kind of sprinkly thing you want. It could be more Halloween based. It could be like, I've got some sprinkles that have eyeballs and stuff on them. That could look really cool if you put like a big eyeball on it or something. So let's try to pick a really cool green one. There's like a cool green spider ring that we're going to be making. So there's a purple green. I'm just going to make all different colors so that the kids can pick whatever they want. Ooh, let's get these. This looks cool, so it's like a fiery kind of spider. These ones here match. So that domes up sometimes, but yeah, that should stick once it's set and dry. So then you can have like a cool fiery looking one. That's kind of a really cool pretty one. Like a pale purple. And you can mix and match colors too. It doesn't have to be as matchy matchy as I'm doing it. It could even be more than what I'm doing. I feel like there's some room in the back of the spider, so you could do something with that. And the nice thing about using the Mod Podge dimensional magic glue is if for some reason the kid does stick things in their mouth, obviously it's not great with the gems and hopefully they don't do that sort of thing, but if it does go in their mouth for some reason or another, at least the Mod Podge dimensional magic is supposed to be, according to the websites, I was doing some research, it's supposed to be non-toxic. So I'm hoping that that's accurate. If you want to, just make sure you do your own research on that. I think these guys are a little too small. These are really cool little embellishments. I think I got these from Amazon. Definitely small. Unless you like this sort of look, this little tiny pearl. I don't think I'm gonna go for those ones though. Again, you can do silver ones, gold ones, pretty. There's all sorts of different shapes in here. Hearts, little circles, triangles, little flower stars. Oh, there's even little tiny butterflies. So these are supposed to actually be like nail gems. They work really well if you're embellishing some sort of jewelry or small item. Oh, another thing I could have technically done is I have these little jemmies as well, but I also have these little pink stars so yeah you know what I mean like you can always just really embellish them you could even make almost like a candy looking spider I think that might actually be really fun and cute it screams Halloween all sorts of things you can do and some of these gems are really pretty too I feel like a red one would look really neat it's cool but I feel like it's not big enough but they're really neat looking for sure but yeah I definitely want to have a plain looking spider in this one this guy looks pretty good I think. okay so I'm going to attempt this right now just to try this out so I taken the regular ones that I found that are just sort of plain they have different shapes and stuff which is kind of cool so it gives some variation for the kids to choose from so I'm just gonna flip them over these ones don't have any gems at all I'm going to attempt to use this guy again if you want to you can use a strong glue I'm going to try this because this is non-toxic I don't want to use a toxic glue just want to make sure that this stuff sticks okay so again lots of bubbles happening here just gonna let it dome up a bit and I'm just going to stick that down like that I'll put it aside very gently because I don't want it to move all that much but hopefully it dries fine and retains its shape kind of like resin wood 
be a little more of an angle. This other one had almost like a flat bottom to it. I'm gonna dry that by putting it aside, letting it do its thing. So apparently, according to the website, I didn't check the, I just like to take some of the stuff off before I put the lid on, but according to the website, I didn't check the box of this, but it said that Dimensional Magics should take about three hours or so to dry. So I'm gonna probably come back in about three hours or so to check both the rings and the gem ones and see how well it did. And then I'll probably put the gem ones on some rings as well. And that should finish that off. So I don't know if you noticed, but some of these ones are the ones that came from the little spider web that you get. You can get it in stores. I got mine from Amazon, but you can get tons of these sort of things in stores, like dollar stores or whatever. But sometimes they have almost like little plasticky things that I just sort of took this and sort of cleaned them up by sort of trimming that off with these little jewelry wire cutters. Not that this is wire, this is definitely plastic. And I also took off this sort of thing. So this is kind of like a little hook that makes it a little easier for these guys to cling in the spider web material. So I would say you can snip that off with this. I'm not going to do that with this one, but you can snip that off with this guy as well, which is what I did. All these guys here have kind of been prepared. So as you can see, I sort of cleaned them up a bit. Some of them are a little harder to clean up. It's really difficult to clean certain edges. It just doesn't seem to clamp very close to them, but I cleaned them up as best as I could. And you can probably rough them up a little bit, maybe with like some sort of sandpaper or something, but I'm not gonna really go that far. It's fine if it's a little bit rough looking because obviously it's Halloween stuff. I think these guys are dry enough because I just put like a little tiny dollop on it. Um, it hasn't been three hours or anything, but I'm pretty sure these guys are on there. They don't feel sticky or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these guys upside down. So these guys are flat now that I've taken those little clips off of them. This one I kind of did off camera. It's like a nice pink gem one. I think I'm gonna leave that one last to turn over, but I'll try to turn over the ones that I did on camera for you guys. Oh, and I did a really pretty blue one. That was one of the last ones I did as well. And I think that's nice. That has like a nice pink sheen to it. There's a nice red one. Flip that over. The light purple one. This little green one. This one actually has shorter legs than the others. I kind of like it. I think it's really neat. The long legs or the short legs look cool. Either way, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with these guys over here. So because these ones are thinner, I'll try to set them a little bit there. Too many of these bubbles, man. You're really not supposed to shake the dimensional magic. It will create a lot of bubbles, so I guess I did that by accident. It wasn't really my favorite mistake that I made. That's okay. It's not a big deal because we're not trying to dome it up over top of something. So anyways, I'm just going to put these guys aside. I'm just going to grab the legs of the spiders and just move them over because if you grab it by the ring, it's just going to fall apart fully. So I'm just going to try to set them aside gently. Actually, I think these guys are probably dry enough, so let's just try doing that. Just try to straighten them up if you can. And then I'm just going to stick those ones aside. Oops, I'll stick this one aside. I'm going to redo this one. And move that aside over there just to let that dry for a few hours. So these guys still look a little bit milky, so they're not fully dry. And I'm going to sort of flip them over anyways, because I'm sure they're dry enough for what I need to do. And they've got a nice flat bottom, which is fantastic. So just sort of gently set them in. It should be fine once it dries. So just, I'm just going to put that aside and we will check on them first thing in the morning tomorrow. So these spider rings turned out, to me, they look so cool. They're pretty solid on here. I think they turned out really, really great. That glue really worked well. It's almost resin-like. So Dimensional Magic is very, very close to resin and it's very water-based. So that's what makes it non-toxic apparently. I love the colors in this one. It's really pretty to me, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, this is the only one that didn't really sort of center when I put it down, I guess. It sort of slid over to the side a little bit of the ring, but it still looks really cool. So you can see quite a bit of the dimensional magic there. It sort of, sort of slid to the side. It didn't center itself very well. But yeah, I, I still think it looks really neat. It's still solid on there. I think they've got a lot of really pretty shine, a lot of personality. They look very magical, a lot of them. It looks like something maybe a witch or even like a wizard would wear. I kind of love these ones too. I think these ones are really fun, especially if you're into like Ouija boards and things like that. And these ones here, I mean, obviously the plain ones are really cool as well. Spiders on their own are really neat. They don't really need to embellish spiders most of the time, but to me, these ones look so neat. Sorry if you are an arachnid
Arachnophobia person. I don't know why you click on this video if you are, but I apologize to anybody who's afraid of spiders, but these guys are fake. So I used to be afraid of spiders, to be perfectly honest with you. And I don't know, I guess Charlotte's Web sort of changed my mind a bit because I mean, they're animals nonetheless. Spooky looking animals, sure, absolutely. But I ran into a spider web when I was a kid, face first. I didn't realize it was there and it really spooked me quite a bit. So I think that was kind of like a triggering thing that made me dislike spiders for a long time. I mean, I got over it and I'm still afraid of a lot of things, but spiders, they're a little creepy when they crawl on you and stuff like that. They're not as scary as they used to be to me, but I can see why people are freaked out by them. And of course, there's some that are actually poisonous and stuff like that. I mean, it's only natural to be afraid of something that's poisonous or can kill you or something, right? So again, some of these spiders are just with no embellishments, as is the way the toy was meant to be. And to me, it looks really, really cool. And I made these guys. So this, I got this one for free at my art store that I used to work at. It was broken, unfortunately, so I just glued it back together. It's a little bit dusty, unfortunately, but it's quite pretty on its own. I really like it on its own. And I had bought another one, and I sort of made this up for my wedding. I don't remember. I think I brought it, and I had something on it. It was like a centerpiece, so I basically put a few different fortune-telling things on my table for my time travel wedding that I did. So this I made basically by spray painting this kind of thing white, because a lot of the things were white and silver at my wedding. I spray painted that white, and then I just went over it with like a Sharpie marker and just sort of doodled palm reading stuff all over it. And it turned out really cool. I use it a lot actually for my jewelry, for rings, and for hair ties and things like that. So these guys are not just sitting around. I think that they look really cool. So anyways guys, that's basically my rings. They're really quick to make. I made them in less than a day. I shouldn't even say like a whole day. I just basically put them together and let them dry. To me they look amazing. I really like how they turned out. So yeah, that's how I made the spider rings. I hope you guys liked it. I kind of love these little hands too though. I made them a while ago, so I didn't really do a video tutorial on those, but you guys can pretty much get the picture. Spray paint, marker. I think I used pencil or something and drew them out before I did the metallic Sharpie. And then I just sort of did metallic Sharpie on the fingernails as well. They turned out really cute. I really like a lot of them. I think these are really pretty, magical looking. They look like a wizard or witch or warlock or something would wear them just something super cool super magical i have very adult fingers and i don't want to stretch them out because of the kids obviously but like i have very adult fingers so i could barely fit it on my pinky that's how small these are play around i would say paint them if you have a non-toxic paint that's acrylic which and i don't really recommend painting them if they're already pre-painted i'm assuming they've already taken into account that kids might put this in their mouth so if they're toxic at all these plastic things that's on the company so i really don't know for sure about that um, Aspect. If anything, try to give them to like older kids or kids that you know are not putting things in their mouth. But yeah, they're very, very glued on. They're not coming off. They're actually very resin-like. This glue that I use, so it's pretty solid on there. I don't think the kids are going to easily break it unless they're really pulling it or something. Honestly, I don't think it's even that easy to break. Even the embellishments look like they're not easily coming off. Obvious that it's been glued, it's very shiny and stuff, but these are very shiny things anyway, so it's not that big of a deal if there's like a little extra shine that you can sort of see on there. In case you guys are interested, I am wearing a shirt that I actually made. Somebody else manufactured it and I did the design of it. So I did it quite a few years ago. It's called the Playing with Plaid Kitty and this one's in the Halloween and the Black Kitty design. So I'll link it down below for you guys. So hopefully you can check that out at some point. Anyways, if you guys like that video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share the video with somebody that you think is into Halloween or like spiders or creepy things like that. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. Anyways, take care guys, have an awesome Halloween, and have fun DIYing. Bye guys!